scroll down and you'll see these lettered tiles up here once you get a certain amount of contacts or applications and it runs again throughout the device. Now I can quickly experience this so if I hit on a letter I can jump to N for example in one click. So two clicks and I'm at where I need to be. At the bottom you'll also notice icons. If you ever need to know what an icon is click on the three dots just there and it will actually list what you're looking at. Um, so I can create a new contact fairly easily. I can view my settings and I can also search the search it does exactly what it says in thin, you just type in what you're looking for and it will take you to that place. If I click in settings, you can also filter your contact list. Now I have all of mine view, but you can filter between Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Outlook, but I have all of mine on all of the time. And if I scroll down, I can also view via first name or surname, and at the bottom, this is where you can add accounts. You can do this in a couple of stages. You can do this when you first set your device up, or within the settings, or you can do it within the People Hub. When I can add an account, you can see I've got my Microsoft account, which is your, your live ID or your Hotmail or your Xbox, whatever you were using before, that's now become Microsoft account. Facebook, um, I've also got my Nokia um, work, uh, Outlook client, my Twitter and my LinkedIn. So you can see I'm pretty well connected, I'd like to think. Um, I've got all of my networks working on there. If I scroll across, I get a What's New feed. Now this is like having your news feed on Facebook or Twitter and it integrates into one place so I can see live what's going on. So you can see Nokia Music made a tweet earlier, I follow Nokia Music. And I can click on there, and I can actually retweet that, I can, I can tweet them back, and I can see the full details of that. So again, you don't need to go into an application to be able to get the information that you desire from it. Scroll across again, I've got my recent contacts, and they're all tile-based as well. Um, and this is quite a good example of, if I push and hold on someone, I can actually pin them to the start screen or edit them. And you can do that at any time in any of the lists I've just showed you. If I click into my housemate, he's a good example, because I have... I have managed to influence him enough that he is also on the, all of the Microsoft ecosystem and Nokia ecosystem, so he has everything I have, which is great because it means that when I go through his contact card, I can call his mobiles, I can text him, I can write on his wall, I can mention him on Twitter, send him countless emails and both of his addresses. We can see where he lives, see where he works. Now, that information, you might think, it's a bit intrusive. You can see quite a lot about your housemate. It's all right to live with him, so it's not too much of a bad thing. Uh, I know where he is all the time. But he shares that with me. So if he, on his social networks, it allows me to see that information, I can see it on my phone. If I scroll across, I can see what's new just for him. Now this is quite nice because you can actually set up groups. I'm sure we all have Facebook friends on Facebook, aren't really friends, they're more acquaintances or people that you've met at some point and you forgot to delete. Um, but what you can do here is you can create a group of your core friends or your sporting groups or whoever, family members, and you can have a group where you see what's new just for those people. If I scroll across again, I can also see his photos. Okay, so I can go in across all the social networks and see his photos. What we also have from a Nokia point of view is some key experiences that, that are only available on our platform. The drive experience looks like this. You can use it in, in both orientations as well. So you can have it in a car cradle, actually use it as a full, fully fledged satellite navigation system. And the best feature about this, in my opinion, is the fact that you can use your maps offline. So I can download a map of any country or any city in the world and use it without using any data. I can even take the SIM card out of the product so it's completely data free. Um, now I'll show you how to do that. If you click on the three lines just at the bottom there, you get your settings and you can also, this is where you set your destination and search. Um, now I won't show you through that. I think you can probably all figure out how to search <laughs> and navigate. Um, what I will show you is the settings. So in here, You've got your map colours, it does an automatic thing where it works out for you night or day and automatically changes. Again, bring that experience to the end user without having to, oh no, it's night, I must change it to night mode, I've got to fiddle around driving, yeah. being a bit dangerous, it'll do it automatically. Um, but managed maps is the main thing I want to show you. So I already have England loaded because that's where I do most of my driving. Um, if you click on the plus button, it gives you a continent, drill down to a country, so if I click on Europe, and you can see it even tells me how much storage that's going to take up. Now you've got 32 gig of storage on the uh, 920 and eight, uh, 8 gig with expand up to 32 on the 820 so plenty of storage for all the maps if you're going on a lovely round the world trip you could download all the maps and 
away you go, you've got three sat Now, all voice guided, and you can choose the voice. You can also change the language as well of the voice. So if English isn't first language, there's full language support for everyone as well. And if we scroll down to the bottom, you've got connection, and you can change that to offline. So fully-fledged offline mapping. And if I go back and click on Nokia Maps, now, again, I won't take you through the process here. Um, some of the nice things are the fact that you can change your map layout and the overlay of that as well. So we've got satellite maps and all the rest of it. Points of interest come up. Really easy and, and quick to navigate. And this button always takes you back to where your location is. But if I click on these three dots, you can also see download maps. The new addition to Windows 8 phones is the fact that you can download your map content for walking maps as well as driving maps now. And it's the same map. So now I have the English maps for walking and um, driving navigation. So I never get lost. Nokia Music is an application that we've developed, and we've had a music offering for quite some time, we've had a music store for quite some time, we've got seven million, around 7 million tracks on there, just over now, uh, available on our store. But our store is not the big play here. One of our big pushes on, on this is Mix Radio. So I'm going to go into Mix Radio and give you an example of what I mean. Now, the content itself is, is, is not generated by server, it's actually made, made by a team of people we have in Bristol in the UK. Um, so, here you go chat, I know you've used it before, but pick me a, pick me a genre. Uh, Cool. Celebs recommend, always a bit of a dangerous one. Um, and then it will break it down into subcategories for you, so you can be a bit more specific with the genre. I'm going to let him choose this time. It looks a bit safer. Okay, cool. So we've got, we've got a track list being streamed now. Now it's around 40 to 50 tracks, and each track is around a meg in size. Um, we use a special audio code at the Nokia Inventor called EAAC Plus, which is a real good compression, but no loss of sound quality, as you can hear. Good sound quality to the device. Good choice, by the way. Um, a bit of teenage kids. Now, in this mode, you can see a lot of different um, different things. Now, the first thing you'll notice, there's no back button. Now, with all the freeness and no subscription and no advertising, the record label's quite tight about what controls we allow the users to have. So at the moment, you can skip forward six times, and you can't skip back, and you can't see what track's next. Now, that's why we call it mixed radio. If you slide across, whatever artist you're listening to, it'll pull up. A biography, if we have one available, we source that from, from Wiki. Um, also, if they're playing any gigs, we have a Gig Finder app on here that not only allows you to buy tickets, tell you where gigs are, you can search via artist or town, and you can also navigate to them using the maps, and that all works within the application. Uh, recommend other artists, and if there are any pictures of the band, they'll also be there, and you can open them up, save them to your device, and there's a Twitter feed as well if we have that available. The other function that is, is uh, really different uh, on, on this system is you can make these mixes available offline. You can do this over your 3G connection, but I'd recommend a Wi-Fi connection for obvious reasons. But I can click on that and it will download it to my device and I can keep it saved for up to 30 days and then it will refresh. They'll give you a whole new set of tracks um, that you might have heard or might not have heard or that you love um, up to the device. But it gets better. So my, my favourite feature of Nokia Music is the Create a Mix function. So if I go into Create a Mix, here you can see I've already set a couple up. If I scroll across, oh, if I go back here, if I click on the Create a Mix button, I put in three artists, so I'll give you an example of one just so you can see what the next menu looks like. And as I type, it actually starts giving me suggestions as well, so it's a really interactive service. There you go, you get album uh, and artist artwork on there as well, which will cover the back screen when you're listening to the music. Once I've populated with three, I click play mix, it will give me those three artists and other artists like them that I like. So it's a great way of finding content, as I said. This service really is one of the main things I would say about it is it's great for discovering new artists that you've never heard of before. Okay? Best thing is, you can make them available offline as well. But finally, is City Lens, which has got quite a lot of the talk recently. Now this is an augmented reality app that opens up your camera and overlays map detail on top of it. So let me show you what I mean. You get broken down into categories. I won't, uh, again, go through those. I'm going to do nearby. And he says, there you go. So now we have map detail, points of interest, overlaid on the camera. Now, my hand isn't the best example of this. When you go outside, honestly, on streets and everything, it looks fantastic. Um, and one of the new features, we updated this application this week, is I can pause the screen, so now it's static, and then I can see what, what I want to click on. So if I click on a point of interest, now it gives me the detail up here, I can get directions, I can share that content. So if me and the gentleman wanted to go for some food tonight, what I could do is I could search for a restaurant locally, I could go in, it, when you click on the um, point of interest, it'll open up in Nokia Maps and it'll give you details about them. So you could call, so I can make a reservation, take you to the website again, so you can see information. You can view user-created content, such as photos and reviews, and then it will give you some other things nearby that might be interesting to you. So it's a it, it really, really condensed information that, that you can use 
uh, to good effect. What happens when I reorientate the device to flat, and I'll just tilt this so, so everyone at the back can see, oh, goes off slightly, is it gives me a map mode with a radius. So I can actually see in relation to that what roads do I need to use, how, far, how tricky is it for me to get to. And then when I put it back into portrait orientation, it gives me a list fly distance. With the 820 and the 920, all we have to do to charge the device now is done. That's it. Simple as that. And we use a system called Qi. It doesn't even have to be straight on. As long as that circular bit of the charging pad is touching the back of the device, it, completely, it charges. It's a universal system that anyone can utilise. So if anyone else brings out a Qi device, they can use our accessories and vice versa. If, they, if, if um, anyone else brings out accessories, we'll be able to interact with those as well. Um, so watch out for more on the wireless charging systems.